ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 23, entitled The Brahmanas' Wives Are Blessed, Text 28 and Text 29. Tadhyata Deva Yajanam Patayo Vodvidetaya Vasatram parashichyanti Yushma bhirgriha me dinaha Tadhyata deva yajanam Patayo vodvijataya Vasatram parashichyanti Yushma bhirgriha me dinaha Tadyata Deva Yajanam Patayo Vodvijataya Vasatram Parayishyanti Yushma Bhirgruha Medinaha Patayo Vodvijataya Svasatram Parayishyanti Yushma Bhirgraha Medina Dhyata Deva Yajanam Vayoghuti Jajaya Svasatram Parayishyanti Yushma Bhirgraha Medina Patayo Vodvijatayaha Svasatram Parayishanti Yushma Birgraha Medinaha Matajis Svasatram Parayishanti Yashma Bhirgraha Medi Word by word meaning Tat Therefore Yat Go Deva Yajanam To the sacrificial arena Patayaha The husbands Vaha Yours द्विजातयः त ब्राह्मणास स्वसत्रम देर ओन सेक्रिफाइसेस पारायिष्यंति विल बी एबल टू फिनिश युष्मा भी टुगेदर विद यू ग्रहमेदिना द हाउसहोल्डर्स ट्रांसलेशन यू शुड दस रिटर्न टू द सेक्रिफिशियल एरिना बिकॉज योर हस्बैंड्स the learned brahmanas are householders and need your assistance to finish their respective sacrifices. So there is no purport to this verse, so we'll read the next verse. Shri Patnayaha Uchuhu Maivam Vibho Arhati Bhavan Maivam Vibho Arhati Bhavan Gaditum Rushamsam Satyam Kurushva Nigamam Tavapada Moolam Prapta Vayam Tulasidam Padava Shrushtam केशेर निवोधुम पतिलिंग्य समस्त बंधुम ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपर्ट बाय डिसाइपल्स ऑफ भक्ति वेदांत और स्वामी चलो प्रभु पार। द वाइफ्स ऑफ द ब्राह्मणास रिप्लाइड, ओ माइटी वन, प्लीज डू नॉट स्पीक सच क्रूएल वर्ड्स, रादर यू शुड फुलफिल योर प्रॉमिस 
that you always reciprocate with your devotees in kind. Now that we have attained your lotus feet, we simply wish to remain here in the forest so we may carry upon our heads the garlands of tulsi leaves. You may neglectfully kick away with your lotus feet. We are ready to give up all material relationships. Purport. Here the brahmana's wives are saying something similar to what the gopis say at the beginning of the rasa dance. Bhagavatam 10th canto 29th chapter 31st verse. When Lord Krishna tells them to go home as well. Like this verse, the gopi's statement begins with the words Maivam vibho arhati bhavan gaditum drus samsham. Nigama refers to the Vedic literature, which states that one who surrenders at the lotus feet of the Lord does not return to this material world. Thus the brahmanas wives appealed to the Lord that since they had surrendered to him, it was unfair for him to order them to return to their materialistic husbands. According to Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, Lord Krishna might have pointed out to the brahmanas wives, you young ladies are members of the aristocratic brahmana community. So how can you surrender at the feet of a mere cowherd boy? To this, the ladies might have replied, since we have already surrendered at your lotus feet and since we desire to become your servants, we are obviously not maintaining a false identification as members of the so-called Brahmana community. You can easily ascertain this from our words. Lord Krishna might have replied, I am a cowherd boy and my proper maid servants and girlfriends are the cowherd girls, the gopis. The wives might have answered, true, let them be so. Let them shine forth if you are embarrassed in front of your relatives to make Brahmana ladies your maidservants. We certainly don't want to embarrass you. We will not go to your village, but will rather remain in Vrindavan, like the presiding deities of the forest. We simply desire to perfect our lives by even a slight trace of connection with you. Thus by the spiritual insight of Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, we learn that the Brahmana's wives offered to remain at a distance and simply take the tulsi leaves that would fall from the lotus feet of Krishna or be crushed by the feet of his girlfriends when he would embrace them. The ladies offered to carry these tulsi leaves upon their heads, thus renouncing the desire to become Krishna's intimate girlfriends or maid servants, a position they knew was difficult to achieve. The young Brahmana ladies begged to remain in Vrindavan forest. If the Lord had then asked, then what will your family members say? They would have replied, we have already transcended our so-called relatives because we are seeing you, the Supreme Lord, face to face. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Thapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrushabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Rivasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा एट द वेरी आउटसेट आई क्रेव दी ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल द वैष्णवास सो दैट आई कैन स्पीक ऑन दिस राधर डिफिकल्ट पर्पट विच इज फ्रॉट विद सो मेनी डिवाइन मेसेजेस फॉर डिवोटिस सो आई really beg for your blessings so that i can speak something now this entire chapter establishes that bhakti is supreme and it reinforces the strength of the process of shravanam so both these come out very prominently through almost entire bhagavatam but in this chapter especially In a very beautiful verse in Damodar Lila, Sri La Shukdev Goswami tells Parikshit Maharaj, "Na yam sukha po Bhagavan, dehi nam Gopika sutaha, jnani nam cha atma bhuta nam yatha bhakti matam iha." Says that the supreme personality of God, at Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda, is accessible to the devotees. engaged in spontaneous loving service but he is not as easily accessible to mental speculators hmm? so thus or to those who are striving for self realization by severe austerities and penances or those who consider the body the same as the self shila <clears throat> prabhupad in a purport to this verse he says that krishna is very easily available to devotees but not is not available to tapasvis yogis uh, and jnanis or those who have this bodily concept of life so bhakti is the only process whereby we can try to know krishna whereby eventually by knowing the process of surrender we can surrender to krishna bhaktyamam abhijanati yavan yas chaspi tatvatah so one can understand krishna as he is only by devotion of service there is no other way this can be done so his holiness radhana swami would often time say that it is not possible to attain krishna by mantra tantra <laughs> that statement he would make very frequently it's not possible to access the lord by mantra tantra uh, or yantra but only by devotional service now krishna is swarat he is also abhidnya these two qualities stand out in all the past times of lord krishna so you cannot fathom or you cannot conceive of the activities of the supreme lord krishna by our limited intelligence no matter how intelligent we are we really cannot fathom what the lord wants or how the lord is going to you know act in a given situation hmm? so when krishna was dancing on the heads of the vicious serpent kaliya the wives of kaliya were also wonderstruck they say kasya anubhavah asya na deva vidmahe tava angri renuh sparsha adhikarah so they are wondering how our vicious husband kaliya how he got this sparsha adhikar hmm? how is it that he got this opportunity to be touched by the dust of the lotus feet of krishna even they are wondering normally wives are supposed to know their husbands <laughs> but here they are wondering you know how he got it because they knew that he was a vicious person so krishna is absolutely swarat fully independent huh? he can give his mercy to just anyone whom he wants to favor you cannot attain him by your scholastic uh, powers that's what is very very clear so <clears throat> so in this in these pages of shrimad bhagavatam also we are decide we are reading how krishna decided to shower his mercy on the simple hearted dvija patnis huh, who had love for krishna in their heart so he just decided to shower his mercy 
and there was no stopping Krishna. So on that particular day, after the pastime of clothes of gopis, Raja gopis being stolen by Krishna, Krishna decided to enact another beautiful pastime and that is this pastime which we are talking about. We have heard about it so many times and His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj in one class has actually summarized everything that needs to be said on this subject. But nevertheless, I will make a vain attempt to speak a few words on this topic. Hmm? So, the uh, Gopas were hungry or at least they pretended that they were hungry because they felt that Krishna and Balram must be hungry. And on this particular day, Lord Krishna, it is described I think in Gopal Champu, that Lord Krishna orchestrated the events in a particular way. He chose a path which was away from any path where the Gopas could find any food, like fruits on the trees or anything like that, huh? away from that. So there was no breakfast, the lunch tiffin had not come from Yashoda Mai, so they were all famished and as Krishna Balram were also famished and the Gopas go and plead with the Lord that please find some way of our getting food this has been talked about again and again so I will be very brief about this aspect of it so Krishna wanted to give equal opportunity both to the Brahmanas who were performing these Yajnas and also to their wives Samoham Sarva Bhutishu. He gives equal opportunity to everyone. So he wanted to give an opportunity to the Brahmanas also who were performing the Yajnas in the sacrificial arena. So he first asks the Gopas, he says that you go to this Brahmanas, go to the sacrificial arena where the Brahmanas are you know, performing the Yajna and beg food for them on behalf of my elder brother Balram and for myself also. You ask as for food and after going there just you know show them due respect stand away and do not you know uh, force them to do anything in other words you keep a respectful distance and then see what happens so the boys the gopas they went to the sacrificial arena the brahmanas were performing the sacrifices and they waited for the right, the opportune moment, stood at quite a distance away, very respectfully, very graciously. They then said that today we have all of us, you know, including Krishna and Balram, we are all very much away from Nanda Maharaja's house. Hmm? And they cannot see where we are. And there is no possibility of our getting any food from Nanda Maharaja's house. And then say, it is mentioned in the Gopal Champu, that they say that you are the Krishna and Balram feel that your house is as good as their father's house. Hmm? So please, you know, come part with some food. And also we can tell you that this particular time, if you may think that one should not uh, give in charity at this point in time while the sacrifices are going on. But we can tell you that this is okay, you know, this time you can give in charity. Now, the unfortunate brahmanas, unfortunate because they just kept silent. Mum, his, his grace Radha Gopinath Prabhu described this very, you know, nicely the other day. So we won't go into it. But he just kept mum, completely ignored, completely ignored the boys. They could have said, yeah come after some time I will give you or say no how audacious of you that when we are performing sacrifice you come and ask for food he could have said that but they didn't say anything they just kept silent ignored them the covered boys who wanted to serve their dear friend Krishna they were very much disappointed and they came back to Krishna crestfallen hmm? Because they were not able to please Krishna. When you are not able to please Krishna, naturally you feel unhappy. So they were feeling very unhappy. They came to the Lord and said that, see, this is our experience. We went to the Brahmanas, but Brahmanas did not oblige. <laughs> they did not give. Krishna said, don't you worry. Don't have any worries. Don't have any anxiety. 
now you go to dvija patnis having given an opportunities to dvija normally krishna does not gives service here krishna gave service to the brahmanas and they refused it it's so difficult to get seva of the supreme lord huh? people aspire for it but they may not get for years together you may not get service so when you get a chance to serve you have to grab so here they forget about grabbing they just kept mum they were inert so here now he says that you go to the dvija patnis now these dvija patnis they carry love for me in their hearts after having gone there you don't even have to ask for food don't even have to beg for food just tell them that krishna and balaram are in the neighborhood and when you tell them that just see the result you don't have to say anything else so these gopas were very happy that a way has been found you know to satisfy krishna and balaram's hunger and their hunger also so they just rushed they ran to that particular spot where to the houses of these dvija patnis and then they said krishna and balaram are in the neighboring forest that's all they didn't say that please give some food so as soon as this information came to the wives of the uh, brahmanas were performing the uh, yajnas they immediately you know did things they they what they did was that <coughs> they were always eager to see krishna in their hearts now we must remember that these dvija patnis had never ever seen krishna they had just heard about the glories of krishna just heard about the glories of krishna and having heard the glories of krishna they developed love for krishna so this is the result of shravanam sincere you know hearing of the glories of krishna you start loving krishna you start developing developing devotion of krishna the other day his grace radha gopinath prabhu narrated to us the episode of rukmini devi how she also writes a letter to krishna hmm? she has also not seen krishna of course she is a different personality she has also not seen krishna but she has heard about the glories of krishna and she wants to marry him and only him no one else on the surface of earth so she sends a letter so she has also heard the glory so we can understand how very very important it is how very important it is to hear the past times of the lord how important it is to hear the shrimad bhagavatam nityam bhagavata sevaya to have to serve the bhagavatam every day and by the process of shravanam this way the they the brahmana patnis they become very very excited extremely excited just to be able to serve krishna so what do they do hmm? as soon as they came to know that krishna balaram had come akshipta manasa babuva jata sambramaha they became very very excited huh? so this is very important if we should feel excitement when we come to know that our spiritual master is arriving hmm? uh, we have to we have to feel that excitement within the core of our hearts uh, otherwise in our heart, we are like we are like dry people that there is no not even a ripple of excitement when the spiritual master has come then there is something wrong so here these they got very excited that our beloved krishna whom we have you know whose love for whom we have stored in our heart he has come so what did they do hmm? chaturvidham bahugunam annam adaya bhajanehi abhisasruhu priyam sarvah samudram iva nimnagah a very beautiful uh, sentence extremely beautiful sentence yeah. so taking along in large vessel the four kinds of foods full of fine taste and aromas all the ladies went forth to meet krishna they were not told that please come i will show you the way no they just they collected everything all the samagri you know food items everything and they just put it in large vessels and just you know they started going with wherever the lord was there so this shows their excitement now it says that samudram iva nimnagah now when the rivers join the ocean they they just go they just 
they, they just flow so very very vigorously they, they are not worried about any obstacles hmm, that come their way hmm? they just you know push aside everything and go similarly here I won't go into the detail they overruled all the objections that were there from their husbands or anybody else who tried to obstruct their path so that has to be the intensity of love that we feel for the Lord unfortunately <laughs> We, we lack it, at least speaking for myself, I like it. So we lack that intensity of love for the Lord. And if you have seen rivers flowing towards the sea, what intensity they have, tremendous intensity. They go and join the ocean. Their journey is complete only when they go and join the ocean. Similarly here, these rivers, you know, very, 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 you know, here uh, the ladies were extremely anxious to somehow or the other go and meet the Lord of their heart. Abhisasru hmm? Priyam Sarvaha. So all of them went and those who did not go they are also carrying Krishna in their heart though they are serving Krishna in separation. So what happened when they went? The Dvijapatnis when they reach, reached where Krishna was the Lord welcomed them. I won't go into the details and <coughs> he says Swagatam vo Mahabhaga. He says, Oh, greatly fortunate ladies, Dijapatnis, hmm? Swagatam, I welcome you. Please come and sit here. So he welcomed them with very, very sweet words. And then he throws a bombshell. What is the bombshell? That is described in the verse here. Tadhyata deva yajanam patayo vo dvijatayaha. You should thus return to the sacrificial arena because your husbands, the learned brahmanas, are householders and need your assistance to finish their respective sacrifices. Now, apparently these words, you know, are not offensive. Hmm? These words are not words which can make somebody unhappy. But these sweet words of Krishna make the Dvijapatnis very, very unhappy. How unhappy? They say, Maivam vibo arhati bhavan gaditum trishamsam. They say that Krishna hmm, says, say that please hmm, don't speak such harsh words, cruel words. No. To people like us, these are not cruel words. He has welcomed them, made them sit, and you know, and has told them. But they are very much hurt, affectionate. The same thing happens to the Vraja Gopis and the same words are also used by the Vraja Gopis to express their discontent when just before the Ras dines this uh, pastime takes place there also they say use the same word Maivam Vibo Arrati Bhavan Gaditum Rushamsam they say Krishna don't be so cruel they say that we have left everything to come to you we have left our babies we have left our household we have left our husbands everyone we have faced all kinds of opposition to come to you and now you are asking us to go. Here also Krishna is asking them to go back to the place, sacrificial arena where the husbands are performing. Now, if you look at it objectively, Krishna has not given a wrong advice, isn't it? It is right for the Ardhanginis or the housewives to be by the side of their husbands when the husbands are performing yajna. It's not wrong. Like we read in the Ramayana that uh, when Lord Ramchandra, after Sita was sent to Valmiki Ashram hmm? and uh, Ram wanted to perform a sacrifice, he got made a beautiful uh, vigraha of Mother Sita with gold and that was made to sit beside Ramchandra while he was performing the yajna. So what Krishna is saying is not wrong basically, isn't it? But this has hurt them. He said, please do not speak such cruel words. Because their aspiration has been crushed. Their aspiration to be with the Lord of their heart has been crushed. And they say so many beautiful things. Hmm? So they say that we are, we are expecting reciprocation from you. Hmm? You always reciprocate. We are expecting reciprocation from you and we are not getting it. We were wanting to be with you, but you are not saying be with me. 
that reciprocation is not there so they feel very very unhappy within the core of their hearts hmm? and they say that we have already given up all our material relationship now we have no relatives no one who surrender, surrenders to you sarva dharman parityaj one who surrenders to you then there is nothing no connection with the material world and you are asking us to go back to the material world no? therefore the words that krishna is speaking are like bombshell hmm? they are completely disturbed by even the sweet words it happens in our lives also whenever you know we have a certain expectation from certain person certain words to come from certain people or certain actions to come from certain people and when they are frustrated apparently they have behaved very nicely with us but we get completely perturbed by even with the sweet words huh? sweet words are like bullets coming and hitting us so eventually it all depends on upper consciousness what is the consciousness with which you know we are doing things what we are doing that's very very important and then what are they begging in the purport we read they are just begging that just let us remain connected with you some or the other now this is a very beautiful statement that the uh, dvija patnis are making uh, extremely uh, instructive in the sense that they are not aspiring for personal association with krishna they are not asking for that they said please allow us to remain in the vrindavan forest let us somehow or the other get to see you let us somehow or the other be connected with you that's enough for us huh? we don't want you know proximity as his holiness radhana swami maharaj very frequently tells us that proximity to a spiritual master is not necessarily <laughs> the criterion for advancement in spiritual carrying out the instructions of the spiritual master is more relevant so very clearly making a statement here that you know we we of we, here vishwanath chakravarti thakur is saying that that the brahmana's wives offer to remain at a distance and simply take tulsi leaves that would fall from the lotus feet of krishna or be crushed by the feet of his girlfriends when he would embrace them so they are not expecting anything from the lord they just want to be there but yet the lord is saying please you know just tadyata devayajanam just go go to the secretary arena that's what he's saying so in the purport there is a beautiful statement that has been made thus by the spiritual insight of shila vishwana chakravarti thakur we learn that the brahmana's wives offer to remain at a distance and simply take tulsi leaves that would fall from the lotus feet of krishna or be crushed by the feet of his girlfriend when he would embrace them so here this word is very very significant i am grateful to my daughter radharani for having given me some insight on the word insight so i want to speak about it little maybe not as effectively as she would have done but nevertheless i want to speak about insight what is insight and then we'll talk about what is spiritual insight insight according to some is intuition now in this material world also there are many people whom we admire for their insight they have lot of experience they have done lot of reading they are worldly wise and in a given situation they they feel okay do this way intuitively they say you do this you do that that is intuition and people get lot of respect for those who can you know very nicely you know who have an insight into various things they they are very much appreciated and they get lot of respect from the people at large because they have because by dint of their experience and by dint of their knowledge they are able to guide people in difficulties huh? so these are people with insight but what is spiritual insight hmm? so spiritual insight is something totally different from insight insight many people may have after you know getting some gray hair you know you may develop insight in certain fields huh, certain areas of activity but spiritual insight that is something which is gift of the supreme lord hmm? gift of god so it is 
is the domain, it is in the domain of pure, hmm, pure uh, and empowered devotees only will have spiritual insight. Many people will have insight, but only the pure devotees and empowered devotees will have spiritual insight. Now, we find that Srila Rupa Goswami, he knew the heart of the Supreme Lord. We have so many stories regarding that. He knew what is in the heart of Lord Chaitanya Dev. And he, because you know, he, he, was, he, was, he was, Lord Chaitanya Deva had permeated his consciousness to such an extent that he would, he would be in a position to appreciate whatever Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did. Hmm? So such devotees who are, most exalt, who are on the most exalted platform of Krishna consciousness are a class apart. They are a class apart. Why? Because the Lord speaks to them. Hmm? The Lord speaks to them and uh, because the Lord speaks to them, they are able to transcend the mere words of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now when you read this purport, the first impression I got was that, you know, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is putting words in the mouth of the Gopis. It's not so. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who is an empowered, pure devotee of the Lord, is actually transmitting the actual state of affairs that are there. So he's doing that. So it's very, very important. So we cannot fathom actually the depth of devotion of a pure devotee. Hmm? It's very difficult. Or even the greatness of a pure devotee. How great the devotee is. We cannot estimate how great Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is. We cannot estimate how great Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada is or Param Guru. We cannot estimate. It's simply not possible to estimate. Hmm? Uh, once uh, the devotees asked Srila Prabhupada, you know, why is it, you know, that he asked somebody to read the Srimad Bhagavatam, he asked, no, why, why is it necessary for you Prabhupada to hear, after all, you know, you have written Srimad Bhagavatam, no, why is it necessary for you to sit and hear? So at that time Srila Prabhupada said that these words are not my words, these are Krishna's words. So. The Lord is therefore speaking through His pure devotees. That's a very, very important thing. So here therefore, the word that by the spiritual insight of, you know, Vishuna Chakravati Thakur, something has happened here, that is very, very important. So, how great is Vishuna Chakravati Thakur? Very briefly I will talk about it. So Vishuna Chakravati Thakur is a pure devotee who was responsible for the revival, renaissance of the Vaishnava, you know, philosophy and Vaishnava Sampradaya. When there was a period between the year 1600 and 1700, which was considered as a dark age in our Vaishnava tradition, he completely rejuvenated, gave life to the Vaishnava philosophy. So, is that great? In every, every temple, Every center of ISKCON, every day, we chant the Davanala prayers written by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Everywhere. They are so potent prayers. Because by, those, by chanting those prayers, if we really understand and appreciate, we can know everything about, that it needs to be known about Bhakti, we can appreciate. So that is the power of uh, the prayers. So every center, everywhere, all over the world, his prayers, that great is our Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Hmm? So, he was he is described as the crest jewel of the Vaishnavas because of his pure devotion, his profound scholarship and what is important, his realized perception of Radha Krishna's intimate conjugal pastimes. It's not just theoretical. Hmm? Many people may speak eloquently about Radha Krishna's pastimes without having even an iota of realization. But here, he had that realization of the absolute truth. Hmm? Therefore, it is very difficult. It is described that uh, Vishwana Chakravarti is, uh, one, one should not compare pure devotees, but he was very, you know, as close to, you know, the caliber and stature of Srila Rupa Goswami. That is what it is described. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati, 
Thakur glorifies Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur as a person who was a protector, guardian, and acharya during the middle period. I said that the dark age, 1600 to 1700, of the historical development of Gaudiya, Gaudiya Vaishnavism. So it is described that in a dream, Lord Sri Krishna hmm, hmm, ordered Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur hmm, to make commentaries on Goswami's hmm, books and immediately he started writing as a prolific writer. If you go through the titles of some of the books that he has written, everybody has an access to that, simply prolific, perhaps next only to Srila Rupa Goswami. Such prolific, you know, writings are there. He immediately started writing hmm, and it is described that when he would write, clouds would come into the sky and, you know, protect him, you know, from the sun's radiation, heat. Sun's radiation can sometimes, you know, give, you know, burns, you know. There are people, the, the cricketers apply, you know, some kind of a cream to protect themselves from the sun's glare. This radiation is very relevant to me right now because my wife is undergoing radiation. So radiation is something which can actually scald or burn. So here, he was being protected by the clouds, the Krishna's arrangement. Hmm? So, And it is, it is written that when there was torrential rainfall, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur was writing the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there was torrential rainfall and when that rain fell down, it did not, not a drop of it, you know, would touch Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur or the Bhagavatam. They would not be affected. Rain, rain everywhere. But he, he was able to carry on with his, you know, writing. So that was was being protected by the Lord. And there are so many other pastimes. I don't know how much time I have. How much time I have? Have some more time? 9.15. So, there are so many other pastimes. So, it is said that while he was compiling Mantrartha Deepika on Kama Gayatri Mantra, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he was guided personally by Srimati Radharani. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur thought that Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has used, he has said that there are 24 and a half moons, or 24 and a half syllables in the Kama Gayatri Mantra. And he thought that Vishwana Chakravarti for a moment thought that maybe Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami you know, may have gone wrong somewhere. Radharani came in a dream and told him, look, you are my dear devotee. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is also my dear devotee. He has not committed any mistake. It is twenty-four and a half. So that way she gave correction to him. So and then last past time I'll conclude when Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur was very, very, very old, emaciated. What happened was there was a crisis of sorts in amongst the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And what was the crisis? The crisis was that the followers of Srila Ramanujacharya, hmm? uh, they questioned, they, they asked the king, they said that, whom are you following? Whose line are you following? The king said, you know, I am a follower of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And then they challenged him. He said that, actually, you know, your line doesn't belong to any one of the four sampradayas which are there amongst the Vaishnavas. You are on a rank, wrong track. I suggest that you take initiation from, you know, one of the disciples of Ramanujachari, come in that line. The king was very much disturbed. And one more argument they said, that you don't have any bhashya or commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. So you are not bona fide. The king was disturbed, very disturbed. It's, it was very difficult to take for him. He knew within the core of his heart that what he was doing was right. But you know, he, when a king is challenged, then all the subjects also will follow suit in case he changes his track. So therefore, the king, you know, sent word to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. But uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti uh, Thakur was not in a position to even go anywhere because he was old and he was sick. So then he chose his crest jewel among his disciples, that is Baldev, with the abortion. He called him and he said, go, 
and you know defend <laughs> the Vaishnavism that all of us are following and all of us are preaching. So Baldev, he, he, he went to the place near some Palta or something, I forget the name of that place. He went there uh, in, near Jaipur, there was a village and in that village these discussions were taking place. He went there. Once he went there he was told, why don't you, you know, you don't even have a commentary. So what authority do you have to come and discuss with us, you know. So then Baldev, you know, he, he, he went, he, he asked for seven days, some say thirty days, whatever. So he asked for some grace period and he said by that time when I come back everything will be ready. So he went to Govind Dev and you know, he, he prayed, you know, he cried in front of the Lord. He cried and he prayed to his spiritual master Vishnu Chakravati Thakur and then the Lord, you know, reciprocated with him how he virtually, you know, dictated <laughs> what, what should be the Bhashya and on so many sutras of Vedanta a beautiful Bhashya was ready, compiled within seven days and it was brought to the venue of debate and when people heard what was there, they said, this is something, something that we have never heard before. This is great. So they were very much, you know, uh, they very much appreciated. And then at that time, this, he got the title of Baldev Vidya Bhushan, huh? Vidya Bhushan, an ornament to those who have learning. So that Baldev Vidya Bhushan. So we find therefore, this term spiritual insight is very, very important. So he is, well, he is actually, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, he is actually telling us what actually transpired. We have read the verse, we do not know exactly what has happened there, but Baldev Vidyabhushan, but Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is telling us exactly what must have been the mode of discussion and conversation, you know, that took place between Krishna. It is not spelt out in the pages of Bhagavatam, but he is you know, telling us that this is what must have happened. You must have, Krishna might have replied, <laughs> I am a covered boy, hmm? and my proper maidservants and girlfriends are covered girls, the gopis. Therefore, you are not fit to be my, you know, servants. You are after all, you know, Dvijapatnis, aristocratic. So that way, discussion which is being, you know, juxtaposed here by Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. So, I would like to conclude now. If I have spoken something beyond my realization, I beg all of you to please forgive me. Hare Krishna. Anybody has any comments or anything, please feel free. श्रीमद् भागवत पुराणम की शिला प्रभुपाद की